Hi guys, welcome to War Wiki. With top Russian and American companies focusing on twin engine heavy fighters and expensive fifth generation jets, the light combat fighter jet market is up for grabs. While the American F 16 has still been the most successful multi role single engine light fighter, the market for small and relatively cheap fighter is too big for just one player. The countries with minimal threat perception and with lower defense budget, are always looking out for light fighters which are not only light on the nation's coffers, but also have low cost of operation and maintenance. There are several countries who are trying to replace their aging MiGs and F-4 series of fighters from early 70s and 80s. Three prospective fighters have so far come in forefront. The Swedish Saab Gripeni, the Sino-Pakistani JF-17, and more recently the Indian HAL Tejas Mark 1A, have potential to grab considerable share of this multi-billion dollar market of light fighter jets. Let's find out how these planes pitch against each other, do keep in mind that we are discussing the potential winner or leader for export and order perspective. The regional influence of India and China, service and delivery of Saab all will play an important role here. We will compare only those variants which are already out and operational, or at least their order book is started to roll and are being readily pitched to prospective buyers. Considering these factors we will compare the JF-17 Block 2, HAL Tejas Mark 1A, and the JAS-39 Gripen E or F variant. While Block 3 of JF-17, Tejas Mark 2, and Gripen NG could be reality in near future, we will not compare their features today. Let's start in the order of weakest to strongest contender to dominate this class. We will first start with the Sino-Pakistani JF-17. Unlike the HAL Tejas, JF-17 or FC-1 Xiaolong, what Chinese call this fighter, has been in the market for quite some time. Pakistan Air Force is the biggest user of this plane. 105 fighters have been built so far. The biggest advantage of this plane is its cost. The Block 2 variant costs around $28 million, the cost of Block 1 variant is as low as $25 million, which is by far the lowest in this category. Even the upcoming variant, Block 3, which will have a AESA radar will cost $32 million. The price range of $28 to $32 million is very attractive for a fourth generation combat jet, an added advantage is that with Chinese financial backing in terms of a soft loan or favorable payment terms, JF-17 has already successfully bagged few export orders from countries, where Chinese light fighters were operated. Nigeria and Myanmar so far have ordered 19 combined. With max speed of 1.6 Mach, this plane is at par with HAL Tejas but slower than the Swedish Gripen E. Yet again its G-tolerance is same as that of Tejas, with plus 8.5 G to negative 3 G, but it's inferior to that of Gripen. Its service ceiling is 16,500 meters which is higher than that of Tejas. Which means it can avoid a dogfight with Tejas, just by reaching its maximum operation height. But this might not be enough to escape the missile range from the plane. JF-17's combat radius is 1,352 km which is the best in this class. Combat radius means the maximum distance the aircraft can travel away from its base, along a given course with normal load and return without refueling. Now let's turn to the disadvantages of this plane with respect to its competitors, this fighter uses SD-10 missile which is variant of Chinese PL-12 missile for beyond visual range attacks. SD-10 has a range of 70 km, which is the lowest BVR range in this class. JF-17 Block 2 is the only fighter in this class which uses a passive electronically scanned array multimode radar, it uses KLJ-7 radar which has a detection range of 120 km for bigger RCS planes and 75 km for planes with lesser RCS. The Block 3 variant will have the active electronically scanned array radar which is considered superior to PESA. The plane has poor stealth features, it has heavy metallic body which is not optimized to reduce radar cross-section. Even in dog fights the smoky RD-93 engines, leaves a trail of smoke that helps in locating this fighter. Another problem with it is that it's not very robust. While both Gripen and Tejas can be loaded with Western, Russian, Israeli and vast variety of weapons, JF-17 is compatible with selective American and Chinese range of weapons. Mid-air refueling feature 2 is not present in its current variants. If you are interested to know about JF-17, you can catch this promotional video made by its creators, by clicking on this note on top. Let's now focus on the Indian Tejas, which is the newest toy in the market of light fighters. Tejas was first inducted in Indian Air Force in January 2015. Its latest Mark 1A variant will be inducted in 2017, IAF has already ordered 20 Mark 1 and 83 Mark 1A variants so far. 
Tejas is the lightest and smallest plane in this category and yet it has a higher max takeoff weight of 13,500 kg, superior to 12,500 of JF-17 and just 500 kg less than that of Gripen. Amongst the three, Tejas requires the shortest runway. A 480 meter runway is enough for it to take off. Being the smallest one, and without any tail fins or canards, Tejas is the most stealthy in this category, with the least radar cross-section footprint, outranking even the F-16. Cost-wise this plane would be the second rank in this category. The cost of Mark 1A variant is around $42 million, which is around 25% more than even the top end of JF-17 Block 3. The LCA Tejas uses ELM-2052, active electronically scanned array radar, which has detection and tracking range of 150 km, this is superior to JF-17 and at par with the Gripen-E. It is compatible with variety of different bombs and missiles. LCA's primary BVR missiles will be R-77 and Derby, with a range of around 80 km. G-tolerance of Tejas is same as that of JF-17, but it does have a superior thrust-to-weight ratio than the Pakistani fighter. The thrust-to-weight ratio of a combat aircraft is a good indicator of the maneuverability of the aircraft. With a thrust-to-weight ratio of 1.07, Tejas is the best amongst the three, while JF-17 has a ratio of 0.95, same as the Gripen C. Gripen E version 2 is expected to have a thrust-to-weight ratio of around 1.05, although it's not confirmed as of now. Looking at some of Tejas's disadvantages. The LCA has the smallest combat radius of around 500 km, as compared to 800 km of Gripen and 1,352 km of JF-17. The main reason behind it is that Tejas was designed to be an interceptor and is thus expected to operate within Indian airspace majorly. With low radius of action Tejas will be required to refuel more frequently than its competitors. Tejas also has the lowest service ceiling which indicates the maximum operational height of the aircraft. The use of American GEF-404 engine, not only increases the cost but also makes the production and export dependent on United States. Tejas is soon coming out with Mark II variant which will overcome most of these flaws. You can watch our detailed video on Tejas, its capabilities, and its history, by clicking the note on the top of your screen. Saab developed Gripen E is technologically superior aircraft in terms of engine and avionics when compared to even JF-17 Block III or Tejas Mark IA which also makes it one of the costliest combat jets in light class fighter category. Per unit cost of Gripen E is close to $70 million, which makes it around 120% more expensive than JF-17 Block III, and 70% more expensive than LCA Mark IA, in terms of unit procurement cost. Adequate funding and a streamlined production line with in-hand export orders for Gripen E, makes it a preferred aircraft to procure for countries who can have better budgets. The plane uses modern active electronically scanned array radar, Raven ES-05, based on the Vixen AESA radar family. The radar is capable of detecting, locating, identifying, and automatically tracking multiple targets in the upper and lower spheres, on the ground and sea or in the air, in all weather conditions, with a range of around 150 km. The combination of delta wing and canards gives the Gripen significantly better takeoff, landing performance, and flying characteristics but also increases its radar cross-section. It's the fastest in this class with 2 Mach as max speed. Its G capacity is the best with plus 9 G as compared to plus 8.5 G for both JF-17 and Tejas. The problems with Gripen E is its extremely high cost, mediocre thrust to weight ratio and average combat radius. To see this wonderful plane in action, have a look at this video on Gripen by clicking the note on top. We also wanted to talk about another single-engine light combat aircraft, the American F-16, which has dominated this market for decades now. F-16 is perhaps the best value for money buy in this light fighter or multi-role fighter market. With very few known problems, it is superior or at par with the three planes in almost all the features and is much cheaper than Gripen. Some variants are cheaper than Tejas as well. With 27 countries flying different variants of F-16, it is perhaps the most sold fighter in this segment. The only reason this fighter numbers are at a decline is because Lockheed Martin are now focusing on F-35 Lightning II, most of the resources and production lines have been cannibalized by F-35. Additionally United States is not open to export this fighter to all countries. F-16 was one of the top contender to grab Indian multi-role light aircraft order, but owing to strict mandates by recently appointed President Trump, Lockheed Martin may not be able to shift the F-16 production line to India, with Prime Minister Modi's make in India condition, the F-16 might lose this bid to Saab. 
you can check out a detailed video on F16 by clicking the note on top. This way we have showed you how the three contenders to dominate the light aircraft market fare against each other. As you can see from the data shown, each of them have some advantages and disadvantages over each other. Now we ask you, what do you think? Limitation and loss of F-16 will be gained for which of these light combat aircraft? Which of the three aircraft will be able to increase its export numbers, will it be extremely cost-effective JF-17, who apart from the cost advantage has Chinese influence over several countries? Will it be advanced but much more expensive Saab Gripen, who has provided on-time delivery to multiple countries and has a very good track record, or will it the, the HAL Tejas which is like a mean between the two? With little higher price but some better features, will Tejas be able to dominate the multi-billion dollar export market for light aircrafts? Do comment and let us know your answers and views. Show us your support by subscribing our channel. Do like the video if you found it informative. Have a great day and support WarWiki.